why can't AI troubleshoot problems just as good as a human can? And I'm going to possibly show you today why it can. But be before I do that, I, I think it's really important to understand what is the challenge here and why if I take a problem that occurs, let's just say I'm a DevOps engineer or an SRE and something goes wrong in the cloud and someone opens a ticket and they tell me to go and investigate and I copy paste into ChatGPT, why can't ChatGPT tell me what's wrong? And the reason for that, when you stop and think about it, is really simple. Well, imagine that on the other side of the ChatGPT window, there wasn't an AI, there wasn't an LLM. Imagine on the other side of that, there was just my friend who got everything I typed into ChatGPT as a WhatsApp message. And then the other end of that was my friend, John, who works at Google and is a brilliant engineer. And I sent into him something saying, my, my application stopped working and it crashed. Tell me why. Well, John wouldn't know. I mean, how could he know, right? To, to know, John would have to go and he would have to run a bunch of commands on my Kubernetes cluster. He'd have to look at the application logs. He'd have to do a whole bunch of things. He'd have to go and troubleshoot and investigate. And of course, if I just give John that information, why did this application crash? Then based on that information, there's no way he can possibly tell me. So of course, ChatGPT can't possibly tell me either. Um, and what I want to show you today is what happens if you let ChatGPT investigate like a human does. What happens if you let ChatGPT go and run those CLI commands or looking for a file in our data dog and pull the information and run an investigative process on an issue that occurs in the cloud just like a human? And I'm going to show you an open source project called Holmes GPT, the open source DevOps assistant that does just that and that promises to solve problems uh, choices faster than the AI teammate by solving them the way a human does. And Full disclosure, I'm, I'm involved in this project and uh, it's something that I've been working on for some time. And I wanna show you why I'm so excited about this. And we're gonna give it though a fair test. We're gonna test it and we're gonna try hard to make it fail. And uh, either I'm gonna find some edge cases that we have to fix or we're gonna, we're gonna see if it can do the stuff we throw at it. So I, I wanna start with a scenario and I wanna start with uh, this microservices demo called the Sock Shop. And this is like a microservices demo from the guys uh, at Weaveworks. And um, if you search sock shop on Google, you find lots of stores, lots of shops to actually buy socks. So not that, um, but there's this microservices demo, the sock shop, it's been archived. And it's to show you kind of how to get started with Kubernetes and deploy a bunch of microservices. So I'm, I've taken that and I just deployed that in my Kubernetes cluster. And I have that over here so I can I get some pods in the sock shop namespace. Let me move the recorder out of the way. And I can uh, see the services. So let's get a service over here. And I'm gonna front, I'm gonna port forward to this front end service. So keeps the L port forward in the Slack shop. I'm gonna access this application, SVC slash front end, and we're gonna listen on locally on port 8079, and we're gonna Port forward that to port 80 in this service. Okay, so I can go now and I can browse and I can buy stocks. And there is, I must give a caveat, there is one extremely unrealistic thing about this demo, which is that any DevOps engineer who has to troubleshoot this and who has the privilege of going to KubeCon like I do, um, it will never need to go and buy socks because you get so many socks and free swag at KubeCon. But putting that aside, uh, this is a somewhat realistic example of a real problem that you could encounter. Uh, so I'm gonna register to buy socks. And I'll make up a password so that Chrome doesn't get mad and tell me my password is weak. And I don't seem able to register. Well, that is that is a problem we can troubleshoot. But I think that just happened because this username already exists. And so let me create a new one. Okay, so I've gone and I wanna click around and let's see if I have any socks in my account. And I'm looking here and I'm gonna go home now. And suddenly this crashes on me and stops working. So I can go over here and I can run again that keeps the I'll get pods command. And I can see that here I have this front end app that crashed 16 seconds ago and there's some issues. And I could start to troubleshoot this and look into the logs and do things, but I, I wanna throw the AI at it. And I wanna throw Holmes at it and see how it does. So I've gone and I've installed Homes locally and I have to run brew install and whatever their commands in the GitHub. And 
What I want to now do is I'm going to ask Holmes. I'm going to say here, Holmes ask, why did the sock shop front end in the sock shop namespace? Uh, you know what? Scratch that. Let's put it on hard mode. And let's not even tell it the namespace for Kubernetes. Why did sock shop front end crash? And again, if I was a human troubleshooting this, I would go off and I'd probably look at the pods, right? And then I'd look at some logs and look at some of the other details. And one really cool thing that I, I can already see this is gonna probably end well, because I didn't put in here the name of the pod. I'll, I'll, we'll show the result in a second. Um, I didn't see, put in here the name of the pod, but you can see here that it found the name of the pod and what's cool is this is iterative. So first it ran cubes DL get pods in the front end. It figured out there. Then it looked at the deployment as well. And from these two commands, it figured out what was the full name of the pod. And then it was able to fetch the logs for that pod. Um, it, so each command is gathering information. It's building a picture of the world. And then it runs more commands based on what it's learned so far. So, so that's really cool. OK, so here's the answer. The front end pod in the sock shop namespace crashed due to an error while handling a response from the order service. Uh, me. Let me zoom out. The specific error was triggered by an unsupported MongoDB operation called op query used by the query command. The issue appears to be related to a mismatch between the MongoDB client driver and the MongoDB server version. Here's the critical part of the logs, and that's quoting the logs for me. And um, the application didn't access properly customer orders on the and there's some issues with the read only file system which complicated the error logging. Interesting. So apparently there was another error here, but that wasn't the root cause, it just complicated the logging. Interesting. Um, and then, of course, I get instructions for how to fix that. So is it true? I mean, it, 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 did it did it make this up or hallucinate that? Or is this the real error? So let's, let's actually go and um, I want to go now and I want to open up this application. And we're going to look at this. And uh, let's just go and look at the Sock Shop application. And let me take that front end pod. Yeah, we had some errors firing earlier. Those are Prometheus alerts, but let's just look at the uh, pod over here. Let me get that out of the way. And let's look at the logs. And the logs are empty because this crashed. So we'll look at the previous version of the logs before the crash. And oh, by the way, here's, here's the 500 error that we had at the beginning, which it realized wasn't related, so it didn't even mention it. And here it crashed, and indeed, if we look closely, we can see that the the client driver may require an upgrade. There's an issue here with the MongoDB version. So that's really cool. I, I want to perhaps go a little bit further. I want to show how this can also tie into your workloads, because sometimes you're living in Slack, and sometimes you get a message, you just want to ask something in CLI, but sometimes you also get tickets in other places. Um, maybe someone goes and they open a ticket in Jira for this, or maybe uh, there's a firing alert in the alert manager. So I, I want to just show really quickly how that can work. And what I've done to try and simulate this is I'm going to port forward to alert manager. So let me port forward here to alert manager. And Okay, I'm already this thing fine. And what I'm gonna do now is instead of saying Holmes ask, I'm gonna say here Holmes investigate. And I'm gonna take care of alert manager. You have to pass in the alert manager URL. So that'll be alert manager URL HTTP local host. I think I have it on 9093. And I'm not gonna have it like all this. I'm just gonna pass in alert name sock shop. And um, I'm going to have to create that there in just a second. So we'll, we'll run that. First, I'm going to create here test alert. And I'm just going to fire off a test alert in the Slack shop. And if I go over here for a second, I'm going to open up alert manager. I can see here that I have the Slack shop front end down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tell it to go and take that take that alert and investigate that alert. I've done that wrong. Alert name. Oh, 
Okay, so it fetched the stock shot front and down there, and now it's going to run an investigation based on that. And of course here, incompatible MongoDB command, uh, may, we, we found this exact same result. So this is a really brief demo. And it's always scary doing demos like this because you never know, I mean, maybe something won't work, but I, it really has, uh, has been able to show here the power of taking this approach, um, which I mean, I, I firmly believe in, that's why I, I, I'm involved in this, but really to show the power of getting good, accurate results out of AI by giving it access to go and run read-only commands and gather more uh, information to investigate. And I would actually love to see cases where this breaks and then to look into how we can we can fix it even when it breaks. But um, I'm, I'm really excited about this and um, I'd love for people to, to go out and try this and to try and, try, try and break it as well, uh, try and find the cases where it doesn't work. And of course, that would be very useful in making it better. So thank you for listening. Oh, and give us a star on GitHub. If you know what they say, if you like, you should put a star on it. So I uh, go ahead and start us on GitHub. And uh, like you saw, it's really easy to get started. You just need an open a you need an open AI API key or an Azure API key. Or I think there's I think we even have support for local models. Um, so uh, please enjoy.